Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. I've had the Odin 2 for a few days now, and so I've been doing a bunch of testing, getting ready for my final review. I've also seen a lot of comments coming in, people requesting me to show off Nintendo Switch emulation. So what I did is I spent basically all day yesterday getting everything configured and then also doing a bunch of testing to get a good idea of how everything will perform on this device. And it turns out I have just a bunch of footage that I think is just too much to sandwich inside of another review. And so what I'm gonna do instead is today we're gonna make a dedicated video talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on the Odin 2 devices. And there are a few questions I want to answer in this video. Number one is going to be whether or not the different RAM configurations of the Odin 2 really matter when it comes to Nintendo Switch. And I also want to give you an idea of what kind of battery life you can expect when you're pushing it really far. And so in all, I tested about 15 or 16 games altogether, and so I'm going to show that off in this video here. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, before we get started, I do want to go over a couple disclaimers just because Nintendo Switch emulation is a bit of a touchy subject. Number one, I want to talk about how I approach emulation when it comes to current generation consoles. For the Nintendo Switch in particular, I own a bunch of these. I think I have four altogether. I've got an OG Switch, then two OLED editions, and also a Switch Lite. And we use them all the time. In fact, it's the only gaming system my kids really care about. In addition to that, I have a pretty big physical collection of Nintendo Switch games. Initially, I was buying them on the eShop just because it was convenient and, you know, because of COVID. But then all of a sudden I realized that I didn't really trust Nintendo to actually keep the eShop going over the years. So instead I started to rebuy all my games. I've been watching out for sales over the years and I've kind of built up this big physical collection. So all the games that you'll see in this video here will have a cartridge next to the game to show that I've purchased it. In addition, many of these games, including the indie games I've bought many times over. In addition to the eShop and then the physical cartridge, I've also bought it on Steam and GOG just because I was trying to figure out where the best place to play many of these games are, and so for the case of something like Celeste, I've bought that like four or five times. And the way I see it when it comes to Nintendo Switch emulation, I think of it kind of as a complement to the original hardware. Yeah, I like playing things on the Nintendo Switch, but also there's a lot of things I like about emulating Switch as well. For example, you have the ability to upscale the resolution or use mods and cheats, and sometimes just using different hardware feels a lot better because it's more ergonomic. So in regards to this video here, yeah, I own all these games and I can play them on my Switch and I want to support those developers as much as possible. But all the same, I also like the convenience of having it on the Odin 2, the same place that I can play other systems like GameCube and PS2. So when it comes down to it, I don't condone any sort of piracy in any way. I think that if you have the means to be able to buy a game, you should buy it first. But if you'd like, you should also have the ability to dump that cartridge and play it on other mediums. And so that's kind of how I'm approaching it here today. I'm thinking of it like a hardware test. I can play these games already on the Switch, but I also want to see if I can play those games on the Odin and how it's all going to work. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the testing to see what kind of performance we can expect on the Odin 2. Okay, let's start by talking about the apps. The primary emulator we're going to be using is Yuzu. This is the early access version, which you can buy on the Google Play Store. And if you're also a patron, I think there's a way to get it for free that way too. This app is in active development, and so new updates are coming out all the time, and the early access build will have those updates more quickly. One of the nice things about this app is that it does have some parity with the PC version. And the setup here is very similar to what you would do on a computer. This also means that you can move over mods and save games if you have those already. Now the other emulator we're going to be using here today is called Skyline. And unfortunately the development on this one stopped earlier this year, which is kind of a shame because it was making some really great progress. Either way, there are some games that still run better on Skyline than they do on Yuzu, so we're going to swap back and forth. Now another thing to note is that we're going to be using some custom made drivers for this device. There's a really handy GitHub page, which I'll have linked down below, which has a repository of various drivers that you can use. And the nice thing is that these drivers mostly focus on Snapdragon devices, including the one within the Odin 2. What this means is that you'll be able to use these GPU drivers in any number of emulator applications that support them. Right now you can do this with both of these Switch emulators as well as the PS Vita one. And thankfully Dolphin just recently added this as well, so it'll work for GameCube and Wii. Anyway, how this works is you'll go to the releases page and then find the most recent turnip drivers. They will be packaged together in a zip file. Just go ahead and download this to your device and then within each of those emulator settings, there'll be an option to load that up. And that's really it. You don't have to unzip them or anything. Now let's talk a little bit about the stats that I'm gonna have on the screen. And we'll zoom in here just so you have a better look. Up top, you're going to have your frames per second. This will be visible both in Skyline and Yuzu. 
Below that, we're using an app called Float Monitor to show the total usage of RAM on the device. And this will be shown as a percentage. So right now we have 28% use, and I have the middle tier Odin 2, which comes with 12 gigs of RAM. And 28% of 12 gigs is going to be 3.36 gigs altogether. And what we're looking for here is whether or not it ever gets over 66%. That's going to be 8 gigabytes. And given the fact that the low end model of the Odin 2 has 8 gigabytes of total RAM, as long as the game works with under 66% RAM utilization, it should probably work on the base model of the Odin 2. So I'm going to point out anytime this does get to a significant number. Now below that, we're using an app called CPU Float. This is going to show us the clock speeds of the CPU core cores, and I'm running everything at max clock, so these aren't going to really change. However, below that, you'll be able to see the temperature reading, so both the CPU, GPU, as well as the battery. And I'll point this out more later, but it seems to be that it stays around 80 or below, depending on how hard we push it. Now, in terms of Odin 2 settings, I've also turned on high performance mode. We're also going to turn on the sport or the highest mode for the fan. So theoretically, this will keep the device as cool as possible, but then also give us the worst battery life as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the difference between docked mode and handheld mode. In my initial impressions video, the example I gave was Bowser's Fury. And while playing the game, I had gone into the settings and changed it from handheld mode to docked mode. However, after going back and looking at the footage, I realized that there is a bug within the Yuzu application. And that is that if you try to swap between handheld and dock mode like on PC, it won't actually work on the Android build. So instead, you have to actually back out of the game, change the setting, and then go back in. And that's what I've done right here during this footage, so this is truly in docked mode. The reason why this matters with Bowser's Fury is because it runs at 60 frames per second in docked mode, but only 30 when in handheld. And here you can see that it's actually kind of struggling to maintain that 60 frames per second, especially when there's a lot going on. Instead, I would say the average frame rate is about 55 altogether. There are definitely some times when it's going all the way up to 60, but it also dips down quite a bit. Now I think this is still probably relatively playable, but you will get a little bit of a yo-yo feeling as the frame rate goes up and down. So I think for a more consistent experience, I would recommend using the handheld mode. Yes, it's going to be in 30 frames per second, but it still looks great and plays really well. In fact, for all the testing that I'm going to be doing in this entire video, I'm going to keep it in handheld mode. And depending on the game, you can probably put it into docked mode, but I wanted to stay consistent in my testing all the way throughout. Either way, as you can see here, with Bowser's Fury in handheld mode with 30 frames per second, yes, we're getting a very smooth gameplay experience. And so for me personally, this is how I would play that game. A couple other housekeeping notes, there is full gyroscopic controls within the Yuzu app. So if there's a game like Super Mario Odyssey where you shake the Joy-Cons, that'll work here as well. And another thing worth noting is that there's often times when you first start playing a game where you will get some pretty significant slowdown. Part of this may have to do with the shaders that are going to be compiling when you first start it up. But then also I found that when you start playing this game for a long time without closing out of the app, it will start to get pretty slow. Again, here sticking with Super Mario Odyssey, you can see that the game's playing at around 40 frames per second on average. And this definitely has a noticeable slowdown to it. And initially when I did all my testing, I thought, oh man, this sucks. Maybe this game just isn't playable. However, just earlier, today, I decided to boot up the game again for a couple other testing reasons, and I found that everything was playing at full speed, including the parts that I was just playing that were at 40 frames per second. So my suggestion is, if you are playing a game that feels pretty slow in the beginning, I would say give it a few minutes, let all those shaders compile, and then completely close out of the app, maybe even reboot the device, and then start it back up and see how it plays. With the case of Super Mario Odyssey, it was a night and day difference. Now I would consider this game to be fully playable. Now, another thing to note is that not every game is going to be compatible with these emulator apps. For example, Metroid Prime Remastered doesn't even open with Skyline, but on Yuzu, you can just see that it has only a black screen. And there could be a few things going on here. Maybe the development team needs to do a little bit more work to get all these graphics working, or it might be a conflict with those custom GPU drivers that I'm using. So it is one of those things where you'll have to do some experimentation, maybe trying out other GPU drivers. However, in many other cases, it might just be a matter of time. After all, the Yuzu app on Android is still relatively new. So if anything, if your favorite game is not playing really well right now, I would say just give it some time and maybe it'll get better. Either way, I did want to temper expectations just because about two-thirds of the games that I tried did play fine, but the other third did not. Some games, like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, just goes to a black screen. You know, this PC version actually has a lot of problems, too. Same thing with Sea of Stars. This one, unfortunately, did not get booting for me. 
Other games like Octopath Traveler 2 would show the loading screen, but after that it would crash. And it's kind of a shame, although the first Octopath Traveler plays just fine, I showed that in my preview video a few days back. So in summary, to be conservative here, I would say that yeah, about two thirds of games will boot just fine, but there is still going to be that other third that aren't going to boot, so it is a bit of a crapshoot. And finally, another note to make is that many games that didn't play very well in Yuzu actually work just fine in Skyline. For example, Celeste had graphical issues within Yuzu, and I was also surprised to find that the only way to play Untitled Goose Game at full speed was using Skyline. And that's kind of surprising because this is a pretty lightweight game. As you can see here, the RAM demand is only about 28%. And I had similar issues with Cult of the Lamb. This one would not boot in Yuzu, but worked fine in Skyline. Of note here, I have not patched this game to the latest version, and so that's why it's running at 30 frames per second. Apparently, if you do patch it to the most updated version, it should target 60 frames per second instead. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and do a showcase of the games that ran just fine here in Yuzu as well as on the Odin 2. Lightweight games like Shovel Knight, absolutely no problem here, were running at about a 34% RAM load. And again, it was a similar story with Hollow Knight. Right out of the gate, this was playing at full speed, absolutely no issues, no stuttering or anything. Now the first time you play any level in Cuphead, you'll get a little bit of a stuttering for the first few seconds, just as all the shaders start to compile. But after that, I found that everything ran at a full frame rate, so this is a really great experience too. Moving on to games that I would consider a little bit harder to emulate, we'll start with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This one also played at 60 frames per second, absolutely no problem. And it was a similar story with New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. I think this is really just a joy to play on this device. Not only that, the RAM demands are still pretty low, only about 37%, which means it's going to play just fine on the base model as well. Another game that's hard to run at full speed is Hades. In fact, this is the first device I've ever used that actually runs at a full 60 frames per second. So for the first time, this is a handheld that can emulate Hades to the point where I would call it actually playable. Now, in making this video, I realized that I do not have a cartridge for Super Mario Maker 2. This is one of those games that I bought during COVID along with like Animal Crossing, and so I just need to go and buy the new cartridge. In fact, there was a sale on Amazon the other day, so I did pick it up, but you know, it takes forever to deliver things to Hawaii, so I'm just going to go ahead and show off the footage here, and you'll just have to trust that in addition to the digital version I showed on my Switch, I also now have the physical cartridge. Either way, this game also runs really well, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a great fit for emulation like on the Odin. I feel like the majority the majority of this game centers around internet connectivity, and so things like, you know, playing other people's levels, you won't really be able to do that here. All the same, if you just want to play through the story mode, yeah, this will work. And next up is Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This one also runs really well. However, bear in mind that I have applied some mods, including removing the blurriness around the screen, and then I also removed the variable refresh rate. If you're familiar with how to set up mods on the PC side, it's exactly the same, and the Yuzu website will actually walk you through that process. Now we're going to move into some of those games that have a higher RAM usage requirement. The rest of these games will have 40% or above. For example, Ori in the Blind Forest does run at full speed, but the RAM demand is about 43%. However, that's still only a little bit over 5 gigabytes altogether. So if you do plan on getting the base model with its 8 gigabytes of RAM, this game should still work. Same thing with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the entire RAM load here is 47%, and that's about 5.6 gigs altogether. So I do think this game's going to be playable, and yeah, it's a lot of fun on this machine. Same thing with Yoshi's Crafted World, this one also has about a 47% RAM requirement. And honestly, when it came to some of those higher-end games, those that are harder to emulate, that was really about it. To be fair, I don't own a lot of those cartridges that are probably more heavyweight, things like Bayonetta or Xenoblade, I just don't own them. But there is one, of course, that I do own, and I want to show that off next. So here we are with this game, which I'm not going to say out loud in case the Nintendo Ninjas are listening, but there's a few things I want to discuss with this game in particular. For example, my RAM usage monitor just crashed anytime I tried to start up this game, and if you watch, the CPU float application will crash and boot back up over and over again as I try it. In addition, I'm throwing a bunch of mods at it, so for example, I'm using the 540p resolution with 30 frames per second, and I've also applied a bunch of different cheats just to improve my gameplay experience. I also pulled over my save games, so this is right before I actually beat the entire game, and I also wanted to go into the open world overworld just to give you a worst case scenario. And you can see right here the average frame rates between like 16 and 20 frames per second. So I don't know about you, but I wouldn't really consider this to be playable. There's just a lot of slowdowns and stutters. And it may be that you just had to play it even longer to get some shaders to cache, but I don't know, I played it for about 10 minutes and this is the results that I got. Now because my app keeps crashing, I can't really show you the RAM utilization, so instead we'll have to use the stats that are being reported by the Odin itself. 
And here you can see the memory utilization is over 70%. We're looking at about 72, I think 76 was the highest I ever saw. And 76% of 12 gigabytes is a little bit over nine gigabytes. So I do not think this game is gonna be playable on the base model at all. However, this does give you an idea of the worst case scenario here with the RAM and CPU utilization, which does also lead me to think that the 16 gigabyte model may not be necessary for good Nintendo Switch. Okay, a couple other things I wanted to show off. I did dock the Odin 2. I'll do this more extensively in my review video. And I've paired it here with my 8 Ultimate controller. Now using a 2.4 gigahertz dongle in the back of the dock did not work, but I could pair it with Bluetooth and it worked fine. However, unfortunately, when you dock it like this, the controls on the device itself are still gonna register. And unfortunately with the Yuzu app, those are the controls that the app is gonna pick up. And sadly, the Android build of Yuzu does not have the ability to map the keys yourself. So while I can navigate through the menus and actually start up a game, when the game is actually running, the only controls that'll be registered are the ones that are still on the Odin. So this means from a docked perspective, it's not going to be a seamless transition where you can plug it up and then grab a controller. And of course, some of these things might get updated over time, but at least as it stands right now in my testing, this didn't work. Okay, and finally, the last thing I wanted to show off was battery life expectations. What I did here is I ran this game for an hour straight in the max performance mode with the fan in the high setting. And after one hour, I measured how much battery I lost, and it was 26% altogether. So if we do some rudimentary math, that means that we should get, on average, about four hours of gameplay when playing a harder-to-run Switch game, and when maxing out all of those clocks at once. So from my perspective, that is some pretty great battery life. Four hours when we're pushing it as hard as it can go is really good. And of course, we'll talk more about overall battery life in my final review later this week. Anyway, that's really about it for this video here. I just had so much Nintendo Switch footage that I decided to make it its own video. And I think there's a lot of people out there who are interested in playing Nintendo Switch games on the Odin 2. And at the end of the day, it is a pretty good experience once you've gone through and configured everything. However, bear in mind, it's not gonna be a perfect experience. You know, compatibility is not the best right now. These are really the limitations that we're working with when trying to emulate Switch on Android. So if anything, I would say this is not gonna replace a Nintendo Switch anytime soon, but it does make for a pretty nice companion console to your Switch if you want to play your games on here in addition to all the other things that it can emulate. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is this good enough to actually justify the purchase of an Odin 2? Or would you rather play it on original hardware or something like the Steam Deck? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we'll see you next time. Happy gaming.